Let us rejoice. So much for coming. With the cold winter weather, we, we are yet to experience the warmness of God's love. So thank you. May God bless each of us as we gather to worship the living God. Last week it was brutal cold. And I'm glad we did not come together. But today we are so glad to be here. And I want to call your attention to some announcement. The church have a new email. So please note that and and we will share that with everyone. And also, next month, Ash Wednesday service is 6.30. Uh, we will be having service here. And people from Correctionville will be coming here as well. So together we worship. The choir will be doing some peace together. Uh, so, so plan for that. Any other announcement besides what in, in your bulletin or print error. Do we have any other special announcement to make? And today we celebrate communion as well. So prepare yourself for that communion. For all who are having their birthday, anniversary, may God blessing be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are welcome to the house of God. Let us greet one another by passing the peace of Christ. Good morning. remain standing for time to worship and sing praises to our God. Let us sing, sing with joy and praise, blessed assurance. Lost in 
in his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Our call to worship this morning. Come joyfully before the Lord. God knows us. Love us. Come prayerfully before the Lord. God sees our concerns, our fears, our plans. Come hopefully before the Lord. Praise be to God who offers us hope. Join me in our opening prayer. You have brought us to yourself, O oh Lord. You have given us the gift of faith. Your mercies toward us are more than we could ever hope to deserve. We stand in awe before you today, offering our hearts, our abilities, and our worship. Come now, Holy One, and make us fully your own, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Our first scripture reading this morning comes from Psalm chapter 25, verses 1 through 6. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. May God bless the reading of this holy word. I want to invite the young disciples to come forward, and Becky will do our children time today. Thank you. Watch the Bible. 
A book? A book. A book? The book of the Bible. Okay, hand it here. The story of God. Good. The Bible is God's word. It has many different stories in it. How many of you like to go to the library? Yeah? <laughs> okay, look up at the picture up there. You see the Bible? Yeah. And you see a library. Yeah. Okay. What do you find in a library? All kinds of books and all kinds of stories. The Bible is like going to a library. It is a book filled with lots of stories. How many stories do you think are in the Bible? 130. 
please be seated. Now is the opportunity for us as a church family to share our joys and concerns. So I invite you with your joys and concerns and to all who having the birthdays this month, happy birthday and blessings to you all. Is there any joys and concerns today? Pastor, um, I think we should pray harder for um, Craig and Deb. Um, so it's been, um, Deb told, I don't know if I'm allowed to share, but Deb told me they were looking at hospice care for Craig, so. They're making those decisions in the next couple of weeks, so. Lift up Craig and Deb. Okay. We'll pray for Craig and Deb. I call Grace. Okay, Army. Yeah, I'd like to thank everybody for the prayers and concerns on passion my sister. And for you for you know, turning around and back up and going back to the hospital. And I'm sorry that I didn't recognize you with your mask on. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, the draws and you started talking. I knew it was. Gabby O'Neill's brain comes over to homecoming Super Pie and Super Bowl, especially Christmas Eve. Mm. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. May her soul rest in peace and continue to pray for you, Arvin. Any other joys and concerns? We have a great joy in our son Nicholas made it home to the state. Um, he was seven months in uh, Eastern Europe for homecoming um, services. And then on the uh, Saturday it was his wife's birthday and they went to the station and all that. He was in the mile and a half train for the weekend and uh, we made it home. Um, I'm a little concerned that there wasn't enough prayers from the Packers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, uh, and Green Bay Packer. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, praying for my mom. Uh, she had a heart attack on Friday. Uh, had a step foot in yesterday. She's doing really good, considering. So I'm very thankful for that. But. Uh, She's very stubborn, doesn't always follow what the doctor asks, so it's been an ongoing issue. So it's very good to take that stubbornness to look away, so, and for health and healing, so thank you. Okay. What is her name? Uh, Linda. 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 Yeah. Okay. Is she still in the hospital, though? Uh, she home? Yeah, not today. Okay, praise God. Okay. And any other jokes and concern? To all who having birthday, we see Jesse having birthday, Beth having birthday, Tracy, Jade, Laurie, T. Countryman, George Allen, Josh, Sisman, Linda, Peterson, Leva, Chapman, Cody, Glenn, Mary, Livermore, Justin. May God blessings be upon you all as you celebrate your birthday. Um, let us be in the attitude of prayer and let us sing this song to prepare ourselves. We'll sing this song twice. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice. Take joy, my King, and while you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let us sing together in prayerful attitude.
Let us pray, O oh, gracious God, we love you. We gather today to celebrate your goodness and your mercy towards us. We give thanks for your amazing love in our lives. We lift up your name high today for you, a sovereign God who are in control of all that is happening in our world. And we pray that your hands will continue to guide us and show us your way. Bless the ministry of our church. Bless each person here today and the family. And for those who are not with us, we pray to God that your grace will be with them. We pray for strength and your grace and peace and love to be with them. And Christ six men today, may you surround them with grace and give them peace, give them strength, help them every step of the way. I pray for your blessing on them and their family. We pray also for your continued healing for Linda, that you will continue to work everything for her recovery. And we thank you for the medical team, for her health, and be with her son and her family as they support her. We also pray for your continued comfort for Arvin and for passing his sister, I just pray that you will support and continue to give him strength and, and all in, in remembering all the loving memories of his sister. May your comforting love be with him in peace. We pray for others who are travel, traveling and, and who have been back home from overseas that your grace and mercy will be with them. We pray for those on this weather. We pray you will keep uh, us safe and warm and, and pray for, for this winter weather and the challenges. And, and we pray across the country, others going through the storm, the, the, the cold. I pray you provide shelter for those who are hurting, those who need help. I pray for those who are hungry, those who, who are homeless. I pray for your mercy. We remember our word, oh God. Our word is in turmoil. Our word is broken. We, we pray for peace in Gaza and the Middle East and pray for Israel, pray for uh, people of Ukraine, the refugee and all the devastation that is going on. And I pray for your mercy, oh God, that this war can come to an end. Yeah, our prayer today, oh God. We pray for our community, for your blessing, and for our school system that you will continue to keep our students and parents in your care and, and administrator and keep our school safe, oh God. We pray for your comfort, for, for, for the community of Perry and for the principal and his family, the principal who have passed away, that you will support them in this difficult time of grief and may you give grace in, the, in that community and in the school, oh God. We thank you that we can gather together to worship you. May we sense your love. May we sense your spirit in this place. Your sweet, sweet spirit. Come, come Holy Spirit and renew us today. Come, come Holy Spirit and fill our hearts with joy and peace. So that when we leave from this place, we can say with David, I was glad I went to be in the house of the Lord. This is our prayer with thanksgiving. Let all God's people say an amen. amen. Then speak to God. Let us sing the faithfulness of God. And please stand as you can. Let us sing, Great is thy faithfulness.
Please be seated. <clears throat> Our second reading this morning comes from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. The words of Nehemiah, son of Hakaliah. In the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men, and I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile, and also about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile are, and are back in the province are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down, and its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed the commands, decrees, and laws you gave your servant Moses. Remember the instruction you gave your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands, then even if your exiled people are at the farthest horizon, I will gather them from there and bring them to the place I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. They are your servants and your people, whom you redeem and your mighty hand. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of this your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of this man. I was cupbearer to the king. May God bless the reading, hearing, and sharing of his holy word. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us today. Speak to our hearts by the power of grace divine. As I give myself away that you will use me to proclaim your word. That it will bear fruit in our hearts for your honor and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. Some of you... You are very good at working with your hands. Some of you can do things, and some of us, we hard I struggle whenever I pass up a Walmart to, to follow the direction and put it together. It's, it, it's a challenge for me. Something I would take probably, uh, for some of you, maybe 30 minutes, I could take two hours working on it because it's hard for me to put things together. When things are broken, we, we, we work hard to see whether we can mend it. Have you been in a time in your life where you feel like, I cannot take this anymore. I want to do something about it. Whether it's at home or cleaning up or just stuff in the basement or just life itself. One problem after another. And we look at the story of Nehemiah today, and in the next two weeks, I will, I will be focusing on Nehemiah, and I want you to think about two words, rebuild and renew. How God was able to help Nehemiah, yes, yeah, a man who loved God, he is in a, a position that he had the privilege, but yet his heart is broken. He had a burden for his home. The war in Jerusalem is broken, and, and, and when he got the news, it brought disgrace and shame. And in those days, the war is a 
a symbol of God's protection. The wall was very important. And now there's ruin in Jerusalem. And what happens to Nehemiah? His heart is broken. And, and, and he is, in fact, the scripture says he is, he is weeping. He is crying. He is in tears. Because this is shameful for the people of God. But he did not wallow in all his grief. He did something about it. Me and my wife prayer. So what did he do? He called on God. He called on God to, to, to give him a burden to give to answer his prayer. In fact, the first part of God, you are the one, you are the great God. You are confident God. You, you are awesome. It's great. You say, if we obey, we will be your people. But if we if, if we disobey, you will scatter in around the world. And yet Nehemiah said, we have disobeyed you. Even me, myself, and my family, we all, my generation, we have, we have lived in disobedience. But in your mercy, be attentive to my prayer. And give grace and favor. You see, when we make ourselves available, when we trust God, when we have a burden, when we bring it to God, with all the brokenness, we have a God that is faithful to renew. We have a God that is faithful to rebuild our life, our brokenness. We have a God who can heal us. We have a God who is merciful. And yet God is calling Nehemiah and using use him in a mighty way. And when the time came, Nehemiah had to get, get permission from the Persian king in order to go examine the war in Jerusalem, he saw for himself. You see, when things happen in our lives, we are broken and we feel overwhelmed. And sometimes we don't know how to pray. And sometimes we feel like God is far away from us. But yet the story of Nehemiah to, is there to help us that, that God is a comforting God, that, that God is the one who will strengthen us. And every step of the way, God hands were with Nehemiah and show favor upon him. But he was praying. He was praying. He was seeking the face of God. In fact, the Bible says he fasted. He prayed. And, and even in, in the scripture, in uh, Chronicles, say, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and turn away from the wicked way, I will yet from heaven and heal the land. So today, think about rebuild. Think about renew how God is calling us. God is in the business to rebuild our lives, the brokenness, to re reconnect those relationships that we long for. Even in our church family, people you know who is far away or who cannot come anymore. We are all called to that work to reconnect, to rebuild. But God is the one who can lead us. God is the one who can guide us. And Nehemiah lived in a challenging time. But yet God's hands were upon him. In that prayer, God was able to answer his prayer. So think about the psalmist in Psalm 25. Say, show me your way, O Lord, guide me. You see, we have a God of mercy. That no matter what we have done in the past, the brokenness, God is still faithful that what we were saying earlier. Great is thy faithfulness. New mercy I see day by day because of the mercy of God, because of his grace. You and I, we can celebrate that we are not faithful. We, we have broken his law, but we can look to the hill where our help comes. That God is faithful forever. Amen? So today, what is in your life that you seeking God for to rebuild, to reconnect. What is it in your life that you want for God to renew? That God to give you a renewed spirit. It just brings me to the man after God's own heart, as the Bible says. Psalm 51, David, 
he wrote that song because he was he was broken. He had done something to God. He had committed adultery, and David is in a state of brokenness. And David called on God, said, "Have mercy on me, O Lord, according to your." Great mercy, blood of my transgression, and part of that son, David said, Oh God, create in me a clean heart, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Only you I have sinned again. God was able to restore David. God was able to renew David because his heart was broken. When we open ourselves, when we bring it before God, we have a God who is able and ready to rebuild and renew us for his glory. So as we come to the table today to receive his grace, this new year my call to you that, that you will make yourself available. That you will be a person like Nehemiah who was a prayerful and committed and we had a burden, not for himself, but for his people. And God used it in a mighty way to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. God can do it again. He can rebuild us, reconnect us, and renew us. That we will be faithful in following him. May God have mercy on us. May God show us his way. For we cannot live with our hand. We can be renewed only by the power of the Spirit to strengthen us for this work He has called us to. Thanks be to God. May God help us. Let God's people say amen. amen. So we come to the table. Before we come to the table, I, I want you to, to consecrate yourself as we pray this prayer of renewal. That we no longer ourselves we belong to God. That God is the one who will help us. So the Wesleyan prayer is on the screen. I want us to pray together as a way to dedicate ourselves that we belong to God. Let us say it together. I am no longer Put me to doing, put me to suffering. Let me be put to work for you, or set aside for you. Praise you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, and I am thine. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. We call ye our prayer by his mercy. We come to the table to receive grace upon grace all are welcome the table is ready for you so please stand let us celebrate the great thanksgiving in the eucharist god show us his mercy in the eucharist we see his hands of ocean of grace and mercy upon us so today my brothers and sisters the lord be with you and also with you Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You form us in your image and breathe into us the bread of life. When we turn away and, and our love filled because of your mercy, your love remains steadfast. You deliver us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the, your prophet. You look for the day when justice shall roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. 
when nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And so will your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join the on any hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captive and recovery of the sight to the blind, to set a liberty to those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you will save your people. Oh, Lord, we remember that Jesus, he healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. So we, by your baptism of suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and deliver us from the slavery of sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit and at his ascension you exalted him and to sit and reign with you at your right hand so today we remember when he suffered today we remember what he did because of his mercy and grace and we say, on the night in which Jesus Christ gave himself for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to the Father in heaven, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciple and said, take ye, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembering of me. When the supper was over, our dear Savior Jesus Christ, he took the cup, the cup of mercy, the cup of grace. He gave thanks to your Father in heaven and gave it to the disciples and said, Drink from this. All of you, this is the blood of the new covenant. Pour the up for you and for me for the forgiveness of the sin and for the sin of the world. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As we celebrate in memory of these Almighty and Jesus Christ, O oh God, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in you with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Because Christ is risen, because Christ will come again. So, Father, I pray that you will pour all your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts. Make them be for us the bread and cup of Christ. Make them be for the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, I pray that you will make a one with Christ, one with each other as we share in love and ministry to all the world until Christ comes in front of victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. And through your son Jesus Christ with your Holy Spirit in your Holy Church, we praise you, we exalt your name. Your name is above every name. All honor and glory is your almighty God. And now and forever that God's people say, Amen. Let us pray, trusting that we have been forgiven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated, and I invite you to come to the table. The table is, is ready. <laughs>
you have tasted the grace of God, let us pray and give thanks to our God. Almighty God, we give thanks for your amazing grace upon us day by day as we have celebrated this great mystery of your grace. May you strengthen us to go forth into this world and serve you in everything we say and do for your honor and for your glory. Amen. Please stand, let us prepare to sing with joy our closing song. Here I am, Lord. <clears throat> the call from the Lord as you leave from this place. May God bless you. May he keep you. May goodness and mercy follow you all the days of your life that you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Go in peace and keep warm. Amen. Thank you.